its own, the brain is like a computer without a program. It requires input from the outside world to function. To allow us to appreciate and interact with our world, we have five main senses, taste, touch, sight, hearing, and smell. As we have evolved, we are less reliant on our senses for survival, but knowledge from them helps us to make sense of our environment. Our data banks are constantly updated as the brain processes information acquired through the five senses. New sounds, sights, smells, touches and tastes are processed and stored for future reference. These five building blocks are our main sensory inputs, but we are evolving others. A controversial area of study that still divides researchers is parapsychology. Extrasensory abilities such as telepathy, telekinesis and remote viewing. The Russians have claimed to be particularly successful with telekinesis. In their experiments, subjects could move objects and even turn on electrical lights. The scientific world still has a lot of disbelief when it comes to ESP. One of the most famous skeptics is magician James Randi, who was offered a prize of one million dollars for scientific proof of paranormal abilities. To date, no one has passed his challenge. I don't think parapsychology is even now a respectable science. We have excellent methods, very good experiments, but quite a lot of good people working in the field. And yet somehow it remains beyond the pale, disreputable, looked down on by psychology. The more we understand the workings of the brain, the more we might come to unlock its true potential. One of the brain's most amazing and critical functions is its capacity to store memories. Our ability to recall our experience of life is what gives us our unique identity. Our memories make us what we are. Places we have been, people we know, things we have done, are all stored within us. The average person stores one million items of memory in their brain. We still don't understand how this is done. One theory is that neurons containing repeated movements, feelings and thoughts link up in the brain to create a network enabling recollection, a sort of mental replay. In the 1950s, Canadian neurosurgeon Wilder Penfield pioneered the technique of triggering long buried memories by stimulating the temporal lobe. A mild electrical current applied to the surface of the brain causes a patient to have a memory from his own past sometimes. I heard what sounded like an orchestra playing and I asked the nurse where it was coming from. Where's... And she said, what music? And I said, well, that music. And then it stopped. Some people seem to have better memories than others. They can remember long lists of numbers and facts. But scientists believe they're not particularly special. They have just trained their brains to work this way. Sleep is an opportunity for the brain to organize and archive memories. Dreams are thought to be part of this process. Rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, is when we dream. If we wake during REM sleep, we can vividly recall our dreams. An REM session usually lasts from between five to 30 minutes. We may have up to six sessions a night. If we are deprived of sleep, in particular, if we are deprived of our dreams, our brain can become incapacitated. 